good evening, everyone. Welcome to the seventh edition of the IPF, the Indian Photo Festival, India's longest running uh, photo festival. Today, we have here with us uh, Jyoti Karat with her latest documentary, When the Ice Melts, the premiere of which uh, was shown on our YouTube and Facebook channels about 30 min minutes ago. In case you've missed it, please catch it. Even after this discussion, you'll be able to relate to what this is about. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please, catch it. please post it on our, uh, apologies for the, for the disturbance, please catch it on our uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, channels, the film. In case you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post them on our channels and we'll take it, we'll bring it here to Abhay, Jyoti and a host of others who are going to uh, be there with us today evening. Yeah. Um, I'll take this moment and introduce Abhay as well as Jyoti. Uh, I may not be doing full justice to the kind of work that they've done, but uh, Abhay is, uh, he's a, I don't know, he's a master of many arts, I should say, he focuses on ecology, art, education, ethics, politics also, but in a sense of, um, you know, that needs to have the aesthetic, right, Abhay? Um, he uh, He's also, uh, a lot into music, but primarily Abhay is an activist, academic, community builder, and system practitioner for transformative change. He's the co-founder of the Initiative for Climate Action. Please note this and uh, you will understand what Abhay is bringing for us today. And he's also a visiting faculty at Aziz Premji University and the National Law School of India University, where he teaches interdisciplinary and experiential courses on climate, justice, and law. That's a rare combination, Abhay, and very much required, I think, in these times. We really look forward to what you bring to the table. Thank you. Um, briefly, to introduce Jyoti Karat, she's the protagonist of this film. She's, uh, she's the person who's created it. Jyoti Karat is a documentary filmmaker, photographer, and researcher from Kerala. Her projects uh, have spanned many uh, different directions. Uh, for example, she's worked with forest conservation and brought out her documentary called Forest Man in 2016. She's worked with human animal conflict. And it, this, is, this is termed as living with the wild, right Jyoti, 2017. And amongst the many things, she's also dealt with Delhi's toxic air pollution problem, which came out in two, 2020. Her uh, 2019 film called Elephant Country explores the human-elephant interactions in Kerala, India, and the concerns that arrive from complexities of the management of captive elephants in the state. How very interesting. Um, today, Jyoti is presenting her film, uh, When the Ice Melts. Again, I'd like to reiterate, the film has already been premiered on our YouTube and Facebook channels, that is the Indian Photo Festival. And in case you've missed it, please do go back and watch it after this discussion. Over to you, Abhay. Thanks uh, very much uh, to Jyoti and the Indian Photo Festival. And uh, thank you to everyone uh, who has joined in for this uh, post-premiere discussion. Uh, it's my privilege to, in some sense, uh, uh, be holding the space. I think uh, I, uh, like uh, many others who are watching, uh, I'm most interested in uh, learning from, uh, of course, Jyoti Karat, the filmmaker, but also uh, the community that, uh, uh, whose life we got glimpses of uh, as we saw the movie, or, or if you're going to watch the movie, the community who you will be introduced to uh, through the movie, along with, of course, uh, the wonderful team that uh, uh, under uh, extremely uh, difficult uh, circumstances uh, uh, has put together what I think is a true uh, labor of love that uh, in some ways is uh, both an archive uh, and uh, a call to action that is particularly appropriate for our times. So uh, I, uh, after weeks and weeks of very, very global, very, very large scale international climate negotiation talks. I'm uh, so glad to have had that film uh, bring me back to place and bring me back to one of my 
uh, most favorite places uh, in this part of the world. And uh, thank you, Jyoti, and uh, uh, to everyone, I think, who in some sense is uh, responsible uh, for this film. Um, just uh, so you uh, have a sense of how we'll be proceeding today, uh, my idea is to uh, maybe start off with uh, a few quick comments uh, from Jyoti. I'll pose uh, a couple of uh, hopefully uh, not too easy questions to her. So we better understand uh, uh, what was going on in this project. Uh, then it would be lovely to uh, really uh, uh, learn from, once again, learn from our friends in Ladakh who, who we saw in the film or who in some way are present in the film. I think uh, we have uh, a few of us uh, in the room. I, I see Urgen is here. I see Nishant is here. Uh, I think uh, Mingyur is here or might be here. Uh, Azin might be here. So uh, here's really an opportunity to everybody who is catching this uh, on any of our platforms or is even uh, uh, in this uh, uh, space to uh, pose questions or, or comments that uh, might be useful uh, to, in some sense, elicit a response uh, from our friends from Ladakh. This is, a, a, I guess, a rare coming together uh, that presents itself. And uh, we have a very special guest who, who we will introduce later today. I think Ratika, is, uh, Ratika Ramaswamy is in the room and we'll briefly turn to her uh, before uh, uh, closing out the session. Before closing out the session with uh, 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 a closer look at uh, the team that uh, uh, put together this film, right? And uh, I want to mention, uh, please use uh, any modality you have, it could be the chat box or the comments function. Uh, if you have a connection to any one uh, of the organizers or me or Jyoti and you're unable to uh, enter into the chat or comments, you could send us SMSs, but we would like uh, to have uh, interactivity. Uh, so your comments and questions are very, very welcome. And we do hope before we close the session out to uh, just create a small space for each and every person uh, who's connected with this film today as a result of the Indian Photo Festival premiering it in this, uh, in this format to take a climate action pledge hmm, to, in some sense, uh, uh, make a promise uh, just to yourself. We won't be asking you to share it with us, but it would be good if you could make a promise uh, that uh, uh, this is what you uh, want to do to respond to the climate crisis, right? Uh, so without any further ado, let me proceed to the uh, first component uh, of our discussion. Uh, Jyoti, welcome once again. Thank you so much uh, for bringing this film to us and also for uh, sort of being amenable to this uh, conversational format in the immediate aftermath of the film. Uh, what I want to ask, of course, uh, is uh, the very, very a big question, if you wish, when one is talking about uh, climate change, right? There is, uh, in some sense, uh, uh, the film that we saw is a film about Ladakh and climate change, but it is also a film about, uh, about community. It's a film about landscape. It's a film about uh, culture. It's a, it's a film about uh, ways of life that... Uh, are a threat of dying out and, and stories of uh, hope, resilience, even uh, uh, crazy bravery in the face of uh, uh, despair, right? And, and as a filmmaker, uh, I'm curious, um, what were you attempting to do uh, when you made this film? Uh, if, I mean, finally, the way in which a film is received depends on uh, quite often the receiver as well, but if you had to identify one or two key uh, messages that you hoped this film would, uh, in some sense, make for anyone who interacted with it, uh, what would those be? Thanks, Abhay. Um, okay, so uh, so before I jump in, I think I I, I should thank uh, IPF uh, and also uh, Jyoti and uh, you, Abhay, for like really like holding the space. It really means a lot, <laughs> and um, to yeah, it's it's really meaningful to have this conversation as well. Um, about the film, uh, actually, 
uh, I, I wanted to make this film back in 2018. Um, uh, by then, there were there were a lot of uh, coverage about uh, Ice Trooper. There were a lot of stories about Ice Trooper. Um, I was very curious about uh, what was happening there. And um, it took me a long while to just get access uh, to the space and to kind of like, uh, you know, get to know. Um, but then what I did uh, have in mind, uh, even before going to Ladakh, was that um, I, I was seeing the same story repeated uh, right like you know there is a certain narrative to uh, all the climate solutions that you see in various parts of the country and uh, just the way the media works the way journalists works etc like you you find the same story repeating itself but without really seeing the people who are being affected by it uh, but this was like I said back in uh, 2018 2019 um, now there are more stories I think uh, which also so uh, it's speaking to the uh, people and what's really happening with the community. But back then that wasn't the case. And to me, those are the more valuable uh, uh, aspects of uh, what was going on there. For me, I need to see the people uh, who live there, who are these people, uh, uh, you know, that we are talking about that who are affected by, um, uh, by the problems there. Um, and and also what are the what are what is at stake um, you know when when it comes to uh, storytelling and especially uh, documentary uh, filmmaking we have this um, a mentality that we need to go for the grandiose right like we you know we have to kind of uh, have an earthquake uh, uh, i mean we, we need to have like a flash flood we need to have cyclones uh, forest fires only then it is urgent you know that is, I think that is like one of the um, biggest problems with the narrative of climate change as well, because like, you know, unless something really disastrous happens, people don't really care about uh, things or don't think it's important enough. So, uh, so these are the conversations I've always had to negotiate with uh, my editors as well. I need to kind of like, you know, argue my way into saying, uh, you know, people, uh, uh, what's happening to uh, their culture, what's happening to the heritage, what's happening to the lifestyle and uh, what, how it's changing matters and these things need to be told. Um, so yeah, so this is what I went, uh, I had in mind uh, when I uh, started this uh, project, yeah. Fantastic, thanks Jyoti. And, and just to sort of stay with that for a moment, uh, I, I think, uh, even um, as you try to bring the people uh, to the front of uh, uh, the stage and as you try to present uh, the story of the community uh, as uh, finally the producer of a technical object, which is the film, uh, you in some sense are, are quite devoted to uh, uh, the technical requirements, right? I have uh, so much time. Uh, these are the conditions I want. This is possibly the the flow of the film, uh, so on and so forth. And and so this is a, a, a potentially controversial question. But uh, as a filmmaker, uh, how do you negotiate with uh, people who who sort of sometimes might point a finger at you and say, "Hey, you are appropriating the story of a community uh, and connecting it to a big global issue like climate change." Uh, the community is uh, not really uh, seeing it that way. I mean, uh, obviously, we have in the room with us uh, members of uh, the community and, and uh, people who featured in the film, but I'm, I'm wondering if that issue has come up for you and, and what, are, what are your own politics in responding to sort of charges of either appropriation or, hey, you are stealing the limelight uh, or, or converting an issue that is... Uh, uh, not climate change to climate change, those kinds of uh, 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 politics. How does how does one? How have you at least uh, tried to negotiate those? Yeah, um, I I have uh, sort of like struggled with it uh, to be honest for for a very long time. Um, and also, I think it is because of exactly what you said. Like you know, you think of a film as a product and something to be made, created, sold, and it it, the, it ends there. Um, but uh, uh, but I think there is there is a lot of um, universal uh, 
concepts and ideas that exist uh, in smaller spaces in in particular uh, stories uh, on indiv in individual stories and life histories etc um and there is value uh, in learning from it uh, and my most recent like what what i have realized about uh, the films also and the way i was working with it uh, the way i was working with everything like even with my photography with any of my writing or um, and my documentary films as well i kind of thought that my job ended when the uh, project was complete that is when the uh, visual medium was created and it was published and i was like oh my work is done but now i see these things as um a very um very differently i think it's it's just it's a beginning of a conversation it is not really the end this is where you start um uh, your your uh, journey with the engagement with the audience like you have you shared with it and then uh, can you have a conversation around it can you have uh, the the people uh, whose stories you have tried to tell or you've tried to appropriate um can we have them in the conversation so it is as fair as as it can be and we have like a equal platform for everyone to um speak uh, speak at um this was also coming from uh my experiences with public engagement uh because some years back i was having a uh, up a, a talk uh, about client human animal conflict and and um, and a lady from the audience a young uh, girl actually she she got up and asked me okay so tell me what can i do about this you know so that's when it like occurred to me i'm like okay so so our job don't really end with just making a film there is more to it and what can we do uh, with it is is what i'm exploring now yeah thank you so much i mean as someone who uh, works a lot with community and quite often uh, is uh, representing the voice of the community i i too am always very very uh, uh, aware of uh, the the sensitivity and uh, mindfulness uh, the nuance that's required right it is there's never a clean easy answer it's, it's always a striving a willingness to uh, to be in some sense uh, humble and let uh, uh, someone else's voice uh, represent uh, and and an openness to to sort of uh, talk about it i think that that what what i would call a reflexivity uh, where even as one is representing the voice of a community or or is a medium to bring a community's uh, story to a larger stage there is a, a willingness to look uh, within and and say that hey what is my role here so i'm going to have a, a, i think a, a conversation on these themes with you through our time together to the uh, jyoti but if, i just want to maybe ask one more focused question which is uh, again when we talk about uh, the climate crisis uh, there's a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors as i would put it at one level people are talking about global uh, uh, agreements uh, uh, to for each country to limit their carbon emissions uh at other places people are really fixated on big cities uh our metropolitan cities uh, in yet other conversations people are hailing science and technology but not the science and technology that is behind an ice stupa uh, a science and technology that uh, in some sense uh, uh, might involve geoengineering the earth or really building large scale uh, alternate energy uh, projects etc as the solution so uh when you sort of uh, think of uh, the story of uh, uh, these villages in ladakh the story of the ice stupa uh, the the sort of attempt by people to take charge of their own destiny and do so in ways that are playful uh, that are also connected to the local culture uh, that are open um, uh, you know about hey this is crude we don't know whether it will work or not but we want to try and uh, do this well fully being aware that it is a life and death matter people have left uh, climate refugees have occurred the old ways of life are are dying out what do you think uh, uh, is the power of uh, a film that goes small and beautiful right uh, do you think uh, uh, this uh, story uh, could inspire others or i don't even want to lean on you and give you a particular 
uh, bias here? I mean, do you, how do you see the appeal of a, a film that is focused when the climate change issue itself seems, seems to be so global, so complex with so many different parts? Okay, uh, I, I think that's a, that's a very big question, <laughs> but um, but I can I can try to answer in a very uh, limited uh, way. Um, I'd say like um, I don't know if you've heard of this uh, journalist Ira Glass. He does this uh, podcast called This American Life, and um, uh, some years ago I heard this uh, quote by him that uh, you know you can't really change people uh you know that that's one of those things that all of us photographers when we start out uh, as a photojournalist etc we have this naive uh, belief that we can change the world with a single photograph etc etc uh but um uh, but yeah I, i've kind of like <laughs> uh you know made peace with the fact that that may never happen but uh but i think what we can do uh with visual storytelling is that we we can show uh, the world the the complexities with which normal people live you know um that that i think is is completely within our power uh, and and uh, uh, you know photography and uh, any kind of modes of visual storytelling is a very powerful medium so we have that ability to kind of like show the relatedness of the people that whose stories we are trying to tell of the issues that we are trying to tell and we can show the world how we are similar how are we similar and why should we care so these sort of things we can do um and i think uh, that that's where um, our um, skills and uh, efforts should be um, channeled um i know i have not answered your questions completely but i think this is the uh, best we can do in our time <laughs> No, no, has already you. told me like yeah it's time up thank you uh, so uh, thanks for for that and and let's uh, uh, now i think uh, uh, w- welcome and also uh, invite uh, uh, i see urgen i see nishant uh, i see mingyur uh, not sure if azin is with us but uh, uh, welcome uh, to to, uh, to friends thanks for joining in uh, i hope uh, we don't have too many uh, technical issues let's uh, let's uh, hope for the best and uh, 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 what i think would be most uh, uh, the best way to do this uh, would be jyoti for you also to in some sense uh, uh, stay uh, uh, as an interlocutor on this conversation so maybe we can uh, have a conversation of the four or five of us together i think the most important uh, uh, question that uh, many people would be interested in uh, having answered is what is happening now uh, uh, what is the latest situation uh, uh, as regards water availability of water temperature farming so maybe you could give us an update on what is going on uh, 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 especially in the uh, villages uh, that you have uh, been visiting recently or or that you've been at recently uh may i request uh, uh i see uh uh urgen uh, would you be able to turn your video on and and azin uh, if you're a year if you could turn your video on that would be fantastic as well i do see uh, nishant and mingyur have your video on so maybe we can start uh, mingyur would you like to say a few words uh, just uh, to get us started uh yeah so <clears throat> right now the so, kulum so uh, with the kulum case uh, nishant uh, is handling the whole pro- project kulum project so he knows the whole thing better but uh, at the same time since i've been uh, i've been working with hayal and aisupa and my mom is also from the kulum uh my mother so <clears throat> i've been uh, directly involved with this project uh, this kulum and aistupa uh, so uh, right now uh, the situation is uh, uh, this year uh, so uh, <clears throat> from since 2019 we have been trying to uh, uh, we have been uh, building aistupa so that we can uh, i mean uh, at least i mean we to st- uh, start the rehabilitation project uh, <clears throat> so so far so after that uh, last year we were able to build few ice tupa and we were able to start the farming at least 
and uh, 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 so this year in 2021 we have uh, start the farming uh, in kulum uh, after <clears throat> more than 10 years and uh, so uh, but it was not very well succeed uh, because there was some major problems uh, uh, there was uh, the crops are being eaten by the birds and all these thing so the, uh, this we are considering as a, as an learning experience so <clears throat> next year uh, i think uh, i mean we will be able to uh, do more uh, more of the farming so that uh, i mean at the end of the day i mean the whole villagers are uh, i mean very keen to uh, coming back to their vill- village they are not happy with what they are now they have migrated to a small village a small i mean village called opsi where which is not their village at all so uh, <clears throat> so it's starting so with the ice tuba project and with the help of uh, deep irrigation so ice tuba project provides ice tuba provide this uh, water and plus with the help of deep irrigation so deep irrigation is a technique where you uh, there's a <clears throat> so with which uh, with the minimum water you can cultivate uh, lots of uh, field so with these two uh, techniques uh, we are very much hoping that ki we will be able to uh, uh, i mean uh, 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 uh cultivate the field in future so that the villager can come back and and there are may, there are may, may, many other aspect aspect like uh, uh, i can i think nishan will tell this better uh, like <clears throat> uh, solar house and uh, really graining and there are many project uh, uh, aligning with it so so far we were able to uh, cultivate the uh, hello yeah so <clears throat> it's uh, i mean there there's a hope and uh, we have uh, i mean it's the hope has just started i mean yeah i think nishan could tell it more better so i would like to hear it from nishan so right thank you thank you mingyur thank you so much hmm. um i will just give a little background mingyur introduced me to this project um as mingyur said kullum is uh, the ancestral home and village of his maternal side and uh, i'll give you a little background about kullum it is divided into two hamlets the upper hamlet has families lower hamlet has four families as you were saying um that uh, due to climate change and its impact locally in the himalayan region as we know there is something called a amplifying factor places which have high glacial areas there the the, glo- uh, the average temperature increase more than the global temperature around the world same has been the factor with himalayas the glacier are receding rapidly the local populace is depended on agriculture for centuries and now in the terms of you know changing economy people are moving away from their ancestral homes due to economy as well as this impact of climate change kulum is one such project that um if we wouldn't have done it right now this actually would be the face of all the villages in ladakh and trans himalaya region sooner or later this problem will be faced by each and every one of us people living in the cities might not face it right away but yeah a few decades down the line you will also face the blunt of climate change so this project of kulum is very dear to both of us for mingyur as well for me as well um i mean as mingyur said challenges were many when we started making ice stupas we weren't successful initially but learning from our mistakes we were able to reach at a point last year where we could save about 12 million liters of water during winters and the same water was then channeled into the fields and after a decade we were able to start agriculture there as mingyur said very funnily the local birds partridges what we call them local language we call them shakpa they ate most of our uh, you know uh, most of our uh, grown vegetables and all but i think this is something what we need to understand giving back to the nature is as important as taking it from the nature right so we are trying our best for this project i mean as mingyu mentioned ice stupa agriculture is a part of it 
solar passive buildings, bringing sustainable ecotourism into the area where people don't need to leave their ancestral homes and practices and, and you know, in search of work, in search of money. So if we can bring the world to them and reverse migration, if you ask me, you know, it's happening across the okay. world in the most uh, developed countries. People want to go back to their roots. Uh, you, once you have experienced what it's, it's, it's like to live in a city, in that hassle, you want peace of mind. For that, most of the world is moving back. So that is what we are trying to do with this project. Show the world that one, it is possible. You can up to some extent adapt and mitigate the impacts of climate change while following your ancient traditions you know, around it. But whatever we are trying to do, these are intermediate solutions. I mean, on a larger scale, people need to change their habits. People need to change how they perceive the world. World is not probably for one generation when you live or probably for your kids or probably for your grandkids. It's a, you know, it's a very linear thing in which you have to think far-sightedly for the entire humanity. So yeah, that is more or less that what our team is trying to do here. And as I mentioned really quickly that sooner or later, this impact is going to come to each and every one of us. It is up to us how much from our individual actions. As you were saying, uh, Abhay, that, you know, the big climate conferences, COP26 just happened in Glasgow. You have all these conferences, but individual action does matter. That is what we feel. Yep. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Nishant and Mingyur. Uh, I, I do know that uh, Urgen, I, I think, is in the room. Uh, uh, Urgen, if you can turn your video or audio on, then it will be happy to listen to your talk. Now the audio has been on, and the on has been on. How are you? Welcome. Namaste, everyone. My name is Urgen. Namaste, namaste. So, we... दफ्सा कुलु में ना ची नज़लु को दोते हो शोधा ना ची रिक्चे ने दोते हो शोधनो कुलु में करेना ताकि कुलु में ना कैसे शोध शोध करना है इसके बीच को लाइक दोष ची रिक्सों दांत सुबह तो यार हिंदी नज़र तो आचरा हम लोगों ने अभी दो साल हुआ ये आज तो बना के कुलु गांव में आ पहले साल तो हम लोग का आज तो सक्सेस न इस बार हम लोग ने इस दुबा तीन बनाया तो हम लोग का पानी के लिए थोड़ा बहुत अच्छा ही हुआ हम लोग ने इस बार खेती भी लगाया थोड़ा बहुत आया फिर हम लोग का बहुत अच्छा लगा है इस बार तो बस फिर इस इस बार भी इसके आगे भी हम लोग ये साल भी हम लोग ये इस दुबा बनाने के लिए हम लोग कोशिश कर रहे हैं और और कैसे लग रहा है आपको खेती की काम में पानी की कमी से आपको डर लग रहा है कि आगे दिन में कैसे चलेगा या आपको आपकी मन में शक्ति है आप आप क्या सोच आ रहा है आगे के लिए आगे के लिए हम लोग ये सोच रहे हैं सर जैसे कि इस बार भी इस बार हम लोग का थोड़ा बहुत आज तुबह के लिए सक्सेस हुआ तो इसके आगे भी थोड़ा अच्छे होते जाएगा हम लोग खेती के लिए हम लोग मेहनत करेगा ये सोच रहे हो सर जैसे कि इस बार इसके आगे तो अच्छा ही होगा लग रहा है इस बार पिछले साल हम लोग का शुरुआत में नहीं हुआ इतना अच्छा सा आज तुबह भी नहीं बनाया अच्छे से फिर इस बार तो हम लोग का आज तो बार भी अच्छा ही हुआ तो खेती भी थोड़ा बहुत आया इस अगले साल फिर से इससे अच्छा खेती भी हो जाएगा फिर हम लोग का आज तो बार के लिए भी अच्छा ही होएगा ये सोच रहे हैं भाई जो इसके आगे हम लोग को बहुत उम्मीद है इन खेती बनाने के लिए बहुत अच्छी बात है और और आखिरी सवाल पूछ पूछूंगा अगर यहाँ तो आज बहुत लोग देख रहे हैं कि ये ज्योति ज्योति मैडम ने जो पिक्चर बनाया वो भी देख रहे हैं और अभी अभी जो जो कुलुम में जो हो रहा है लोगों को जानकारी आ रही है कि ऐसा भी हो रहा है ये पानी की कमी है पर लोग आइस्तूपा भी बना रहे निशांत भाई और दोस्तों के साथ 
ये कोशिश हो रहा है तो अगर आपको कोई एक आ, 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 कुछ बोलना है जगत के लोगों को आ, आपकी क्या सलाह होगी या आप, आप क्या कहोगे सबसे जरूरी क्या बात है इस इस तरह का आ, काम करने में आप आपने क्या सीखा है और और आप दूसरों को क्या आ, देना चाहोगे ये जो, जो जानकारी जो आपने प्राप्त की है अभी इस इसके बाद हम लोग ये करेगा सोच रहे सर अभी पाने थोड़ा वो तर है तो हम लोग ने पलंग पेड़ पौधे हम लोग ने ज्यादा लगाएगा इसके फिर हम लोग ने ऐसे ऐसे करेंगे ये सोच रहे ना सर पेड़ पौधे लगाएगा तो हम लोग के लिए अच्छा ही होगा फिर बारिश गिरना ये मौसम भी अच्छा ही चेंज हो जाएगा ये सही लग रहा है अभी हम लोग का शादी के टाइम तो बहुत पानी आता है फिर वही पानी इकट्ठे करके रखेगा वो का सुना मानसूक ने हम लोग का इतना शिक्षा दिया तो हम लोग ये इसके लिए हम लोग ने दिमाग थोड़ा यूज करेगा हम लोग भी सोच रहे थे सर इसीलिए सबके लिए ये ये कहना चाहूंगी सब ने इतना मेहनत करेगा तो थोड़ा सा ये क्या बोलते मेहनत का फल हो जाते है इसके आगे भी हम लोग यही करेगा सर जैसे कि इन पेड़ पौधा लगाना ये करूंगा सर बहुत धन्यवाद और तो इतना हिंदी नहीं आते लेकिन पता नहीं, नहीं। हम भी दक्षिण भारत से हैं तो आपकी हिंदी और हमारी हिंदी बिल्कुल जुटता है <laughs> बहुत, <laughs> बहुत ही अच्छी बात हुई जस्ट क्विकली ट्रांसलेट फ्रेंड्स आई थिंक what urgen uh, shared uh, with us was that uh, uh, the ice tupa efforts have been going on for i think about 2 or 3 years or at least she's been aware of that uh, and participating in that process uh, and uh, uh, last year the stupa was built uh, but this year it's going to be built uh, is it is being built even better and uh, in some sense uh, urgen has given us a message of uh, positivity and hope as well her last words were you know uh, if i had to say uh, pass on something in terms of a learning it is that when people come together and do this work eventually you do get uh, 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 the reward for your labor and we are convinced that uh, this is the right way to go which is continue to plant uh, trees uh, continue to grow our own foods and uh, in some sense take care of the land so uh thanks very much jyoti would you like to say something uh i know nishant and mingyur also have barely said anything and i now see that azain is in the room but let me turn to jyoti quickly if she wants to come in oh i was actually hoping uh we could hear from asin uh did she disappear again no i think i see her in the room azain uh, could yeah. you turn on your video and uh, unmute yourself are you able to do that yeah of Uh, yeah just yes uh, could you uh, i can't see you but i can hear you now how are you ah now i can see you as well welcome hello you hello yes we can hear you okay i'm doing i'm doing good so we are actually keen to hear from you in terms of uh, how do you see we've all watched the film just now how okay. do you see the situation uh on the ground and if there's one message you want to uh pass on to everyone who will watch this video either is watching now or in the days ahead will watch what is that message about uh, about uh, water shortage about uh, village life about people trying to solve their own problems so uh anything that you'd like to share is very welcome ओके मेरा मैसेज यही है कि वी शुड प्लान मोर एंड मोर ट्रीज ताकि हमारे मदर आर्थ को सेव कर सके ग्लोबल वार्मिंग के एंड वाटर के स्थिति को इम्प्रूव कर सके हाँ जी और ज्यादातर हमारे जो लोग हैं मतलब कि अर्बन एरिया में शिफ्ट हो रहा है वो मत रूरल एरिया में बैठ के कुछ करिए और जो फील्ड है जो और उसको मतलब कि छोड़ हाँ जो फील्ड है जो प्लांट्स है उसको मतलब आगे बढ़ाए और जो फार्मिंग लाइफ है और एग्रीकल्चर 
को ज्यादा ज्यादा मतलब महत्व दे और इम्पोर्टेंस दे हाँ जी और ज्यादा से ज्यादा प्लांट ट्रीज ज्यादा करे ताकि हमारे लद्दाख में स्केसिटी नहीं हो नहीं हो अभी हमारे जो लद्दाख में बहुत स्केसिटी है वाटर के तो उसको हम इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं और ज्यादा से ज्यादा आइस टूपर बिल्ड करें ताकि हमारे समर में हम हमारे को हेल्प हेल्प हो बहुत बढ़िया और और ज्योति जैसे लोग जो आके फिल्म बनाते हैं आपको कैसे लगा उन, उनसे मिलकर हाँ। और और इससे क्या हो सकता है अगर ये कबर बाहर भी जाए हाँ जी मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा कि ऐसे मतलब कि बहुत अच्छे फिल्म मेकर मतलब हमारे लद्दाख में आए और इतना मतलब इतना एक क्लाइमेट चेंज के बारे में एक फिल्म बनाना बहुत बड़ी बात है क्योंकि मतलब कि ज्यादातर मतलब कि इधर आके ऐसे ऐसे देख के जाते हैं पर ज्योति करार जो मतलब विंटर में आके इतना सर्दी को सहन करके वो इतना अच्छा फिल्म बना के गया मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा वो धन्यवाद वो हमें भी अच्छा हो आ, लगता है जब आप ऐसे कहते हो ज्योति वुड यू लाइक टू से समथिंग uh thank you asin <laughs> i i think we are all little bit biased here but <laughs> but i will take it uh thank you um no so i actually wanted to uh, uh speak about exactly that um and actually any one of them would be able to uh um answer also um uh, i think one main aspect that we have left out in the film also is how difficult uh this whole project is of making an ice tuper they work like in uh, in this uh, dead of the night where, i mean when it's really really cold uh, they camp out there um uh, so uh, i i think nishan mingyu like you know one of you guys would be able to and and the entire village comes together um and and it's not like a, no one is paid everything is voluntary people are coming together and they're like really um it's it is like i mean you described it correctly abeth i think it's like really like an act of courage really like it's it's quite something uh for people to come together and do all of this um i i don't know how that community is still like you know working together in this day and age as well and uh, even with all these people like you know leaving and um you know there there might be some friction there might not be friction but still you know the the work is still getting done how like what is the secret of the ice to party team to you know motivate how do you motivate people to come together yeah so <laughs> i i mean since like uh, like kulum there there are few other stories of this uh, climate refu- refugees so <clears throat> kulum is i mean just uh, very near to le and we could i mean it's easily accessible and <clears throat> and it's very near so we were able to uh, uh, address this problem and uh, so uh, i mean there's no such secret of <laughs> working so hard but uh, at the end of the day it's like uh, and now uh, we have to do some action no i mean the village the whole village has been abandoned and the villagers wants to come back and so there should be some solution so the uh, only solution we found is the ice tupa and with the help of deep irrigation and other technique we could uh, we may rehabilitate so that was the only possible solution and we approached to the uh, villagers uh, and the villagers agreed and they were very happy with this solution and they <coughs> were they were uh, ready to volunteer so whatever it make my takes so uh, in 2019 we tried our first ice tupa so i mean uh, i must tell you that uh, uh, to build a ice tupa artificial glacier the site matters a lot kulum is such a place the uh, ice tupa building site was not so great not so good and plus um, the winter uh, the water uh, the winter water was very low and it freeze and it uh, i mean it uh, i mean it's a huge ob- obstacle for uh, making ice tupa so in 2019 uh, 
uh, we uh, start with our prototype and the villagers is uh, i mean they put a huge lot of effort but it was not succeed at all so then <clears throat> again we reconvince them and uh, we uh, last year we were able to build uh, lots of ice stupa so it's about like they, they want to come back and they were they're putting all all the effort into it and uh, <clears throat> making it happens but it's not just ki they it's like a like i mean so it's a, it's a global problem majorly you know so uh, global warming so it's uh, up to every individuals to i mean change their habit rather than uh, look, uh, villages like kulum and there's another village uh, called kumik and shun kumik and shun are other two villages which uh, uh, which were migrated so they have also they also had to migrate it because they don't have any water in their um, villages so it's like i mean this type of story will keep continue if we stop i mean if we don't st uh, stop acting uh, i mean don't change our habits so thank, thank you mingyur i thank you i think uh, i would love to uh, listen to a lot more but we are uh, unfortunately running very out of time uh, yeah sure I'm, i'm jumping in thank you there uh, Sure. Uh, uh, I also I just want to take this last moment uh, uh, to uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart thank uh, you thank uh, Urgyan thank uh, of course Nishant uh, and Azin uh, for all making this time and being here I think uh, many 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 more stories have to be told by you uh, but uh, let me take this moment uh, to on behalf of everybody who's uh, fighting against the climate crisis all of my constituency who takes the climate change very seriously uh, thank you for the remarkable uh, example that you all are setting uh, i think as azain said uh, uh, that wasn't translated but uh, many times we people come and uh, or, or people come into ladakh and just see things and go away but uh, thankfully jyoti has made a film that allows us uh, to to meet each other and talk to each other so thank you Jyoti I'll request you to maybe please quickly invite and introduce uh, Ratika as we proceed into the next segment Sure um thank you uh, welcome Radhika um okay so Radhika very uh, uh, seldom needs an introduction she is i think one of the most influential and uh, well known uh, bird photographer uh, wildlife photographer of india um i think she is she was also one of the first uh, women uh, wildlife photographer or the the uh, first uh, 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 women photographer so um Ra i've known radhika for a little uh, for a little more than a year or two but like uh, my introduction to her was uh, when i was on an assignment for the guardian to uh, cover this uh, you know uh, bird photographer who works alone etc and i think that in the time that i have known her also like this there's, there's been a lot of change from this uh, sort of um, uh, interpret uh, photographer working in the wild i've seen her more and more uh, get involved with conservation and uh, uh, you know sustainability and kind of uh, get into education etc so um radhika welcome and uh, tell us tell us if you have any thoughts about uh, the film that you Uh, I, I know you've seen the film. I've shown you the film before as well. But like, uh, if you have any thoughts about it, and um, also your your role, um, how it's transformed from just being the uh, photographer to um, uh, you know uh, into conservation as well. Thank you, Jodi. First of all, uh, 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 inviting me to premiere this uh, film. Of course, I have seen this <coughs> movie already with you. Uh, let me congratulate for you as a uh, conservationist by heart and a nature loving person and always talking about <clears throat> even climate change uh, wildlife conservation all, all the uh, talks i talk i usually give uh, for colleges and students so that's why i was sitting from the start to watch again this movie and uh, i uh, you know uh, listening all the information from uh, from ladakh our friends from ladakh it's really uh, inspiring and uh, uh, 
uh, i had to congratulate you again of course you are around, around 2006 i had been to ladakh just uh, like any other uh, for landscape photographer taking my wide angle lens to see everywhere though i had been to switzerland i thought oh yeah, india we have so uh, more beautiful than switzerland okay i fell in love with that ladakh i realized that time Uh, even the milk or curd as a south indian without curd i couldn't uh, finish my food so curd i was asking in pangang lake uh, even lay also they said it's way it's not uh, it's not available in those time so now after uh, going through uh, uh, watching this movie even water is also going to be very rare in summer uh, <coughs> though i knew ice tube all the thing even youtube uh, so many uh, technicality how they are going to build and all but your film really uh, like you said it get into the how it affects the people who who are living in the lake so really a uh, marketing i really like the perspective just not, not just saying it's a climate change because of the climate change no water uh, suba is there but you get into details in the people's perspective who, people who are living in the area so i really like this and i wish you uh, do more conservation film like this also because i am fan of your documentary even the uh, elephants uh, film also i really love the way to approach you maybe like uh, abira uh, was telling you really connect with the community so your uh, perspective is seeing through the through their eyes so we need more uh, documentary from you i expect and <clears throat> regarding me i had be i had been to this field like last 18 years i love uh, as you told me i started as a uh, photographer taking good picture beautiful picture but along the way my perspective changes okay and around 2010 our last 11 years i am doing more uh, conservative conservative talks and uh, even nature photography for the students colleges and uh, last year i founded wildlife conservation of india non profit organization through this it's not only about talking i want to take uh, create more awareness about our uh, wildlife conservation of course environment uh, climate change all the topics though the uh, students are in the city they know everything maybe with the net but my aim is to reach more the second tier the metros uh, towns and other even villages also to directly to visit uh, to give talk or uh, through zoom so we started last year student for nature play by wildlife conservation of india through this we conduct a lot of workshop nature workshop photography workshop talks also so maybe for the students all new but for my thing is if 10 people are uh, listening two people are interested to inspire to be in this uh, conservation uh, field that's my aim uh, creating more awareness just simply are talking no just uh, i'm doing my two bits though it's a small thing but i am two cents you can say and conservation part like a photography these days we have uh, ott platforms and b blogs and social media platforms we are always looking for beautiful beautiful pictures even including me also posting because of the usual regular fans want to see but i love to do more conservation part of the environment issue projects also i am doing it i was doing it uh, but i uh, request more photographer has to come even top uh, uh, photographers has to involve the environment issue like you did sir like jyoti you did do lot of uh, fancy travel blog that would have been get millions likes but you went to uh, you had been to lay for the winter to do documentary like this so like this i invite my fellow photographers other photographers also to do conservation issue photo projects definitely instead of uh, talking reading no like uh, we one picture we usually say one picture uh, ta- talks thousand words no it may not be thousand words but still the visual media reach more uh, fast so we can uh, along with taking beautiful photographs we can give some our 20% or 10% our time to do an environment issue climate issue and conservation photography also for oh, people are doing it i, I request more i wish more people are doing uh, hope have to do this also thank you jyoti and it was really pleasure to uh, listen all your uh, uh, guest uh, talks also and views also i was specially listening all the things thank you once again for inviting me to this uh, session thank you radhika yeah. thanks a lot all the best yeah thank you same to you. 
Over to you, Abhay. Thank you. Thanks so much, Radhika. I think uh, uh, you yourself are also very inspiring and, and thank you for the beautiful message. Uh, thank you, Abhiraj. You are taking very smoothly from the start of uh, things. I really enjoy uh, the <laughs> host, hosting uh, skill. My best wishes to uh, all of you. Uh, and I am leaving for uh, Gujarat LRK. Please allow me to leave now. I say bye now. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank good you. Night. Good night. Good night. Good trip to you. Thanks, Thanks very you. much. Thank uh, you. Bye bye. Uh, friends, let's move to our next component now. And I, I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to present uh, uh, the amazing, amazing people uh, who have been. Uh, uh, involved in making this film and bringing it uh, to us. Uh, so we, we don't have much time, but I would love to listen to uh, each one of you share a little bit. Uh, I, I see uh, uh, maybe I'll just, uh, by way of a very quick introduction, Anushri uh, uh, Butter, who's been the cinematographer amongst other things. Uh, I, I know from Jyoti that uh, Anushri had a a torn ligament uh, and was uh, involved with this project in very, very uh, dodgy terrain. Uh, and we'd love to hear from Anushri about uh, her own uh, experience uh, on this project as well. Uh, uh, Praveen, uh, uh, someone who uh, I am constantly learning from, uh, a spectacular mountaineer, uh, uh, someone who's achieved what are really uh, called superhuman feats, uh, including uh, being one of the only, uh, or, or possibly the only man to have scaled uh, 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 a very uh, dangerous peak in the Siachen Glacier, who I think Praveen was uh, involved with uh, uh, the film in uh, multiple capacities, including camera, sound, and production. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mahima, thanks for joining us. I haven't had a chance to say hello to you, but I have heard of your very, very efficient uh, uh, support, uh, very, very uh, uh, calm and collected, uh, uh, time-sensitive uh, contributions, especially on the animation and graphics. Uh, uh, so lovely to have you here. I just want to acknowledge Badra and Govind, uh, who uh, sort of were the original composers of some of that amazing music that we heard at different moments as we watched the film. So um, maybe how we do this is uh, very, very uh, quickly, just a minute or two uh, uh, for, for each person initially, at least, we can just go around in a circle and you've heard everything, you've seen the film many times uh, and you know this event, how it's been coming together. So uh, what would you like to share uh, as both uh, someone who's now very involved with creating uh, knowledge around climate change, but also as a person who uh, uh, was involved in making a film, right? I I'll leave it rather open. Maybe we could start with you, Anushri, in terms of uh, uh, your message or, or what, what is really coming up for you as, as an important uh, uh, thing to say at this moment. Um, I think one of the questions that you asked was, uh, I mean, some something that Jyoti Jo expounded on was about taking, uh, you know, individual efforts in in the micro micro space to do what you can, and I think that is extremely important. I mean, without that, uh, the ice super wouldn't have happened, and I think the urgency that people in Ladakh feel, especially when one is in a situation when they have no option but to abandon your land, your home. I mean, I think people are willing to do whatever it takes to sort of uh, not let that happen. And if that has happened, to take any measure to, uh, you know, reverse that. And I think um, that's the most important thing for me. I think we've, we will eventually reach a point where there will be no question about what is your motivation, because there will be no option but to, you know, take action. I think that's the most important thing that I figured from where, while we were shooting. I mean, the terrain there is incredibly hard. And, uh, and people there in the village in Kulum have no option but to do this, to revive that village again. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, we were freezing our fingers off, our toes off. Uh, I think my fingers were swollen. Uh, so, but yeah, it, they're really hardy people. And 
they can do it, I guess. So. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. I, in fact, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, especially since you yourself are struggling with uh, an injury of sorts, uh, what kept you going uh, at the moments when it was the most difficult to, to keep going? Maybe when it was coldest or when you all were not having good luck with the light? What did you tell yourself about, uh, uh, about what you were doing that allowed you to keep going? Uh, I think what I've always, what I've always liked about photography and cinema is that it allows you to get to places where you will never in regular life be able to reach. Uh, and that is like that curiosity and that sense of what is out there, I think will keep you going, has kept me going. And, and when you're there and you have no option but to do the shot because you've come so far, uh, you might as well do the shot do what what whatever you can and then get back to the warmth i think yeah that was basically what kept us going fantastic thank you i think there's many more uh, stories to be told uh, thanks for giving us a glimpse into your uh, experience uh, praveen how are you doing thanks for joining us uh, what would you like to share with our audience either those who are watching now or those who will watch this recording how was how was your experience being a part of this uh, film team uh, uh, and uh, obviously sharing this very important story uh, with many more people. Hello, Abhay. I'm good. Hope you're good too. <clears throat> uh, well, um, it was a very good experience like uh, working with uh, two uh, girls like, you know, from here to, who had like barely experience in the mountaineering field, like, you know, uh, but still uh, the hard work they put like, you know, they come from here, they work the entire day. And for the night, e evening shots also, I remember like, you know, when we had almost finished everything, the shots, and we were coming back, it was late, it was freezing. And then like, uh, the, both were freezing, like almost like everyone was freezing and we, were we had to drive back like 50 kilometers back to the, uh, for our homestay. And in between, they saw some shot and they just stopped. And then like that, uh, you could see that sudden change of that, all that freezing, everything just went back and they were on to work with full excitement. And like, you know, uh, when it came to work, uh, that was nice to see them. And also like um, the Ladakhis hard work is like to another extreme. I think like we can't, no, no one in India like uh, can match of their hard work, what they do. Like, you know, they, they have to work in the night to build the ice stupa. Like, you know, if there are clouds, they're not happy because it's not that cold. The water which comes out will not freeze the um, ice, you know. So they prefer it to be more colder, like, you know, when there are no clouds. And then the water sprinkles and the stupa forms. And when, when, it is, um, when the water is flowing by the pipe, it gets frozen on the way. So they have to keep tapping the pipe all the way and make sure the water is flowing continuously. You know, which is not like um, easy job at all. Like, you know, in the day itself, it's like it goes to minus and it's freezing. But in the night, uh, playing with the water, going up and down and coming. Um, it's really a tough job what they're doing. Thank you. That's that's beautiful. I mean, it gives me a sense of almost a, a sacred reverence towards, uh, towards water and their duty, you know. Uh, and uh, I'm very glad you bought in. The, I'll never forget that detail of tapping the pipe so that the water keeps flowing. A uh, very beautiful uh, picture that you've bought up. And, and I think even as a mountaineer, uh, with climate change affecting uh, ice everywhere, uh, affecting our mountains everywhere, it's, it's an amazing perspective that uh, uh, you, in some sense, uh, possibly bought into the film in some way. Uh, so many more stories to be told by you as well. Uh, I am going to, because of time, turn to uh, our, our final guest, uh, but not really a guest. These are, I think, the team is, is responsible for this beautiful gift that we have. Mahima, what would you like to share? What, has, uh, uh, what is coming up for you right now at this moment that uh, you'd like to pass on to our audience? Um, I wasn't part of the shooting process, but uh, I got in touch with Jyoti and uh, she showed me the entire film first before telling me what she actually wants. And 
that actually changed in sight of me as a person first of all that made me to live a eco friendly life to start trying to live a eco friendly life and uh, uh, the other thing is that i loved working with jyoti like the calmness she told you about the patience she told you about it all came because of her because how patient and how calm she was and how clear she was with what she wanted and the way she conveyed it to me so i think it was a 50 50 thing <laughs> from both the sides so yeah i really loved being a part of this project i loved being uh, working with her and working on this project amazing and great to hear and and i do hope that uh, your example will inspire many many more people uh, from uh, design uh, graphic uh, artistry uh, just the, the entire range of uh, uh visual arts uh, to to think about uh, uh climate change but also think about stories of climate resilience yes so we uh, thank you thanks uh, thanks to you thanks to praveen thanks to anushri jyoti i think i'm going to turn it to you for the last word we are uh, at our designated time and we have to end but i think uh, it would be quite fitting if uh, you as a uh, uh, the person who in some sense uh, held together this film uh, would like to take us on our way uh, before i turn it to you uh, i would like to once again thank uh, the indian photo festival for this opportunity i want to definitely thank uh, each and every one of our participants who despite uh, busy schedules bis- despite uh, poor internet connections so on and so forth have made it here i want to thank everyone who is watching this uh, either live or uh, a recorded version and i want to remind everybody at this moment uh, we'll just actually pause for 30 seconds in silence uh, just think of what is it that you uh, promised to do uh, in, to respond to the climate crisis make a pledge in your own mind uh, if you wish you can close your eyes or uh, i'll just stop talking and for 30 seconds just take that time and and make a pledge say something in your mind to yourself of what you promise to do okay that's uh, quite a meaningful silence i heard lots of pledges going into the universe thank you uh, jyoti final words from you and we'll i think close our session for today well, thank you abe um that was wonderful i think um i think what the just the one thing that i really wanted to uh, um share uh, especially at in a platform like this with the the photography festival going on is that uh, for for many many years i worked as a, a photojournalist and um, one characteristic of a photojournalist is that we work alone we tend to work alone especially if you're a, uh, an independent photographer or a freelance photographer um i i think i discovered the value of collaboration that too late i i hope it's still not Uh, you know way too late but um i think i i missed that uh, you know um of collaboration togetherness so for me in many ways uh, the the um, when the ice melts is a, it's a coming together of all these ideas both in my professional life as well as uh, in my story as well um it was the the story itself like you know whenever we were there we were like seeing a togetherness of the community even in the face of challenge even with all the things stacked against them uh and for me as well like the film honestly would not have been possible without anushree without uh praveen uh without mahima coming in to help without badra and govind uh you know contributing to the music uh and even aarti giving um helping with access you know i i had i struggled for two years uh, to get access so um i think it's important to recognize that importance of the community and uh value the uh, you know the members of those community um, you know and uh, not have everything uh you know purely on a transactional base but um i, I think the one thing that uh, that praveen and um, 
Anushri also didn't uh, <laughs> didn't mention was that um, they were they were more than uh, what they were doing. Uh, you know, they were more than their professions in the team, and um, they that more than that synergy that happens when all of us work together is what makes a, a film possible. Um, and I think the same could be said about uh, you know climate change as well. I think we we all need to sort of come together and become more than just us yeah absolutely beautiful thank you i think uh, let's uh, end on that uh, there's uh, uh, a lot to to be gained uh, by us coming together um, and being more than our the sum of our individual selves in some sense so thank you once again to all have a great rest of your day uh, uh, Jyoti from uh, the Indian Photo Festival is back on screen. Any any words from you, Jyoti? Or no, or just a big big thank you for bringing this to us, um, using IPF as a platform for uh, having this very uh, very interesting discussion. And thank you, Jyoti, once again. Uh, thank you, Abhi, for steering the entire thing. Uh, yeah, we look forward to many such projects in future too. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Bye. Bye.